This lesson is about two new theorems, the angle-angle side theorem and the hypotenuse leg theorem. Angle-angle side is AAS and the hypotenuse leg is HL. The first theorem that we're going to look at is the angle-angle side theorem. Now, we're used to looking at uh, angle-side-angle theorem where the side is the included side, but now we're going to have a case where uh, it can the uh, side doesn't have to be included between the two angles. So we're adding the, a new theorem here. Um, so if I have two angles and any side in one triangle congruent to two angles and any side in another triangle, uh, then the two triangles are congruent. Now, here's the reason why. If I know that this angle is congruent to this one and this one to this one in the two triangles. We know previously that that means that if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in another, we know that these third angles have to be the same measure. They have to be congruent to each other. And what this creates is an angle side angle. If I look at these three, I have an angle, an included side, and an angle congruence. Okay, and to the same parts on the other triangle. Um, so because of that, because we know that third angle will be congruent, the angle-angle side theorem is just sort of a hybrid. It's just really the angle side angle theorem. It's just that we haven't drawn that third angle in as being congruent. So uh, from now on, if we have two angles in any non-included side of a triangle congruent to two angles in a non-included side of a second triangle, then the triangles must be congruent to each other. Okay, so let's do an example of this theorem in use. Um, I've got two overlapping triangles here, and it's always good to redraw those, split them apart. But first I'm told that uh, JG is congruent to uh, GK. Oops, this should be a GK. So I'm going to mark uh, G, GJ congruent to GK, so those two little pieces. And then uh, angle H is congruent to angle I, so I'll mark those. And I've got to see if these two triangles, uh, JHG, I'm sorry, GHJ and GIK, if those two are congruent. So really easier to draw these triangles separated out. So this one will be G with the J and the H. And then this one here We'll still have, well, this will be a G on top, and this will be the K down here, and this will be the I. So now if I mark what's congruent, there's uh, GJ to GK and angle H to angle I. Now, the thing to notice is that this angle up at the top, angle G, is in both triangles. It's congruent to itself. So I'm going to throw that in. And uh, now I can see I've got two angles and a non-included side. So I think that I've got an angle-angle side congruence here uh, of the two triangles. So the second step that I want to add to my proof is that angle G, which is included in both triangles, is congruent to itself which is, of course, reflexive property. And then I've got uh, that angle, the two triangles, GHJ and GIK, um, are congruent by the, so we'll put number three here, by the angle-angle side postulate, or theorem, it's actually a theorem, could be proved, so by angle-angle side. And that's a, a little example of how that works. The second theorem in today's lesson is the hypotenuse leg theorem. And this says that if you have two right triangles, if the hypotenuses are both the same length, and one of the legs, so it doesn't matter which leg, so say that it's uh, this leg congruent on each of them, then you have congruent triangles 
Okay, and the reason this is true is because if you slid those triangles together, it would be an isosceles triangle. And you would have, um, if we matched up, in this case, the two short sides, put those together, our hypotenuses would be out here, and this would be an isosceles triangle. And we would have these two angles over here congruent, which would be up in here. And we would have an angle-angle side congruent or a side-angle side. So anyway, hypotenuse and one leg, it doesn't matter which leg, uh, one of the other, one of the two legs that's not the hypotenuse. Uh, if those are equal, we're, we have congruent triangles. So here's a short proof of hypotenuse leg um, theorem, using hypotenuse leg theorem. First I'm given um, these two triangles that are back to back here. Um, XWZ and XYZ that are both right triangles and I'm told that WX, segment WX, so this one here is congruent to YX, this one here. So um, what I need to prove these triangles congruent or all I need is if I can prove hypotenuse and leg. So see the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So in these, this piece in the middle, ZX, is actually congruent to itself, it's the hypotenuse to both those triangles. So I can say that ZX is congruent to itself by reflexive property. And once I've done that, I have uh, the given WX to XY and uh, the reflexive ZX to ZX. So I have a hypotenuse and a leg congruent to a hypotenuse and a leg uh, with the two triangles. So I can now say that triangle uh, XWZ is congruent to triangle XYZ by the hypotenuse leg theorem. Okay, now what I needed to prove, and I should have mentioned that in the beginning, is that this side here, WZ, is congruent to this side here, YZ. And so the last step I need to prove that, once I prove those two triangles congruent, is that those are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And so they are for, therefore congruent. So that's just a little example of how to use hypotenuse leg theorem. And that is it for the lesson.